So I actually didn't even turn my camera off between my last video and this one. I just said bye and then said hi. So I'm going to do my glitterature on Entwined as said in my last glitter gossip video. And this is a classic retelling of the fairy tale the 12 dancing princesses and i had actually never read that fairy tale before reading this book i was told that after the fact when i was tweeting about it so i didn't have a comparison while i was reading it i read this not knowing the basic premise of the story so i didn't know what was going to happen i didn't know the characters personalities or anything like that although i don't know how similar it is because I still haven't read the actual 12 Dancing Princesses fairy tale. So this is by Heather Dixon and this is an amazing book. So before I even get started with my review, I will say I recommend it. It is great. If you are here just to see if I am going to recommend reading this book, my answer is yes. And I do normally enjoy all of the books that I do glitteratures on because if I don't enjoy a book, I don't finish reading it normally. I do try to, but normally I just put it away for another time. And if that's the case, then I never get around to doing a glitterature because I haven't completed the book. So if I complete a book quickly, then that is when I do a glitterature and that's normally when the book has been good. But I have enjoyed some books more than others within the books that I do glitteratures on. And this one was like top of the list, one of the best ones I've read since doing my glitterature series. But it is very different from the dystopian themed books that I've been doing a lot of glitterature. I do think that it's aimed for a different reader than the typical reader of the dystopian themed books. Obviously you can like both books as I do, but this is for the true romantic fairy tale love story. It has a lot of magic. It has like actual magic. It reminded me a lot of Beauty and the Beast and I actually thought that it had tie-ins with Beauty and the Beast because the castle that they live in is actually a magical castle and they talk about having a magical tea set which just reminded me of the tea set in Beauty and the Beast and until the very end I kept thinking that they were going to make reference to you know her great great grandfather or whoever it is that like made the castle magic maybe was the same person that was the beast in Beauty and the Beast but that connection was never made. There's 12 princesses, they're all girls and they all range between like ages 18 and 2 or something so they are basically 12 sisters back to back to back to back and they all have names with letters of the alphabet so Azalea is A, Bramble is B, uh, what was C? Clover. It just all goes by letters of the alphabet, which was kind of interesting because some of the names are so beautiful. Like, I think Azalea is a beautiful name, but then you get to Bramble and you're like, why wouldn't they have named her like Buttercup or, um, I don't know. I can't think of like another pretty B plant name off the top of my head, but Bramble just seems like one of the worst names you could name her, but then it kind of fits her personality, which is like kind of funny because she's very like brambly like she just if bramble was an adjective it would fit this girl's personality the 12 princesses love to dance more than anything in the world and their mother passes away which is very typical of these old fairy tales you have one parent passing and the other parent kind of becoming forlorn and distant from their children and then the children kind of have to fend for themselves and that's exactly what happens in this book so they're banned from dancing because they go into mourning when the mom dies which is really sad for them because that was like the one thing they enjoyed doing and they find a secret passageway in their bedroom that leads to this magical enchanted world that reminded me a little bit of Narnia because when they first walk in it's all white and beautiful and it just the way it was described was very magical and lyrical and really made you feel like you could imagine the place and you could feel the wind on your face and the earth underneath your feet like it just it's written in such a magical way I love love the way this author writes. That was probably my favorite thing about this book is the way the story flowed. It was very poetic and I just loved this book so much. So they go into the magical world where they are allowed to dance all night long and they end up going, they start going every night and then they end up getting trapped after a while because there is a keeper of this magical place and 
the keeper kind of gets more and more creepy throughout the story until you actually find out that it's a little bit like a horror story in the sense that the more they go the more the keeper kind of sucks them in to where he finally can entrap them. It definitely has an element of mystery and suspense and it's a little bit terrifying actually at the end. It, it gets really scary. The author has a very vivid imagination with the, um, I, I don't want to spoil it, but there's a scene where their mom kind of comes back. and It's just, it's very creepy and it I think this book actually would make a really great movie because it has very vivid scenes where you can definitely visualize it very clearly and it was a really great story. So the girls relationship is very sweet as well. The 12 sisters are very close. They share one room and um, which is kind of crazy like you think oh my gosh in your princesses you live in a castle why do you share a room but then you find out like they kind of want to because they're just they're really close and they're kind of like a little tribe of like princesses and it just it makes me want 12 sisters like or 11 sisters like I want to be Azalea I want to be the oldest of 11 more sisters I have two so my parents have nine more to go so get going parents I want nine more sisters it was a very enchanting story to read and it has a happy ending as fairy tales a lot of times do and it was just a very pleasant story to get absorbed in and to imagine and I really wish that it became actually more of a series because I would totally be in love with reading more about Azalea's life. Hopefully maybe there will be a sequel but it's not necessarily set up to where you expect a sequel. It's a very nice contained story within one book where you don't read it expecting to have to read nine more books after it or something. You know you just you read it and then you've read like a nice story. So I definitely recommend it. I want a magic set of sugar tongs after reading this. I mean the sugar tongs were actually like really grumpy in this story. I recommend it. If you've read this book, leave a comment below telling me what you think and I'll see you guys later. Bye.